Ladies and gentlemen, in this talk I would like to present the results of a modest test series that are part of a larger ongoing research project over the last years. Before getting to the actual main topic of this talk, allow me to give a brief overview of the Solinger construction. What you are seeing here is the interior view of a barn roof in Berlin from 1923 with a span of 11.38 and the pitch of 2.9 meters. The timber barrel roof structure is composed of upright boards arranged in a rhombic pattern. In this particular case, each board is only 23 mm thick, 23 cm tall and 2.2 meters long. Shown here is a streamlined depiction of the basic principle of the Solinger construction. From a structural point of view, it specifies a vault in which the external loads are evenly transferred through the ribbed frame to the purlins. The short board lamella are aligned to form a rhombic grid. Due to the articulated node connection, each segment of the mesh is a 4 inch system with which has to be braced. Hence, the roof boarding serves as an integral part of the construction, besides just being a secondary load bearing structure. The constructive detail of the nodes is of particular relevance to the internal load transfer and deformation properties of the structure because the historical Solinger node shown left demonstrated a few mechanical deficits. The aim of a corresponding research project was to redesign the node concept in order to improve the load bearing capacity of the connection and homogenize the deformation behavior. The revised concept resulting in the micro offset node places the adjoining lamella in line with each other and connect to the central lamella with stab joints. The structurally driven approach built heavily upon modern methods such as technical timber drying processes and the usage of high precision woodworking machines. In sum, the results of our previous research led us to the hypothesis that the use of wood composite boards with their higher in-plane stiffness and their potential of biaxial load transfer would significantly change the internal force dispersion and as a result improve the load carrying capacity of the structure. In order to determine the influence roof cladding has on the structural behavior, a test series with three specimens were conducted. The three specimens vary from an unbraced structure on the left, a structure close to the original Solinger concept supported by planks in the middle and a revised approach of covering the structure in an entire wood composite board. The experimental setup anchored the structure to the ground, connected the purlins with two tie rods and applied loads via hydraulic presses equidistantly across the span. The right image further clarifies the scale of the specimens used in the experiment. Depicted here is the Solinger specimen version in the test setup along with a chart outlining the test series. To reduce resource consumption, we constructed three specimens and subjected each to three different kinds of load tests. The first two tests on each specimen applied varied service loads with different bracings, whereas the third and final test applied a failure load with as of then untested form of bracing. The bracing and designation columns in the chart further illustrate the process. Ensuring deformations were quantified with photogrammetric measuring. A total of 45 markers were evenly placed across the entire specimen and assigned corresponding numbering automatically by the measuring software. As seen on the right, we ultimately narrowed these down to 19 points for the final evaluation process. All of the following test results will be in reference to the focal node marked here with an orange circle at the center of the structure. Looking at the test results of the specimens on the minor loads, the partially braced Solinger test series exhibits an incongruent behavior of suffering from even greater deformation than the unbraced series. This was outside our expectations and will be analyzed in future tests. The reflex roof test series reference with the black curve in comparison reduces the occurring deformation by half. While admittedly a relatively small sample size, it does corroborate the efficiency of the revised construction concept. 
diagram shows the entire results of the test series, including each specimen being loaded until failure. The blue line representing the unbraced tests achieving a load of 18 kN before reaching its breaking point. Unlike its performance under minor loads, the Sollinger test series demonstrated a failure load almost twice that of the unbraced series. The reflex roof series showed even further improvement of 65% over the Sollinger series. The additional 40 mm deformation marker illustrates a 90% load bearing capacity increase of reflex roof over Sollinger. The inconsistencies of the individual curves can be led back to irregularities in the materials and localized failure points. These images show two main failure points of the structures. The left occurs during too much transverse tensile stress at the center of the lamella. The red arrows represent the compressive forces in longitudinal direction, while the green ones represent the transverse tensile forces. These internal forces also cause the joint of the node to gape. The failure point on the right occurs when a screw hole compromises the integrity of the material and produces a crack in line with the grain. To briefly summarize, the various revisions made to the structural concept had a significant impact on its performance. The tests showed that by redistributing the internal forces, the load bearing capacity can be substantially improved and corresponding deformation decreased considerably. Concerning the future, this demonstrates the potential to further improve resource efficiency or achieve even greater spans with the structure. Last but not least, I'd like to thank you for your attention. For any further inquiries, I would refer you to the contact information in the lower right-hand corner.